Hello, good morning. How are all you doing today? Uh, I have uh, the mic working again, or at least we're going to see if it's working again uh, long term. It at least hasn't shut itself off this morning yet, and I, I set it up before the stream started, so that's good. Esitsu, hello. How are you doing today? So I ended up doing a couple different things. I um, First of all, I, I got that new USB, uh, let's see, what was it? It was the... Oh, was, I always forget what they're called. The the something express. Uh, but it got an internal card that runs on the internal power SATA as opposed to just off the card um, power. And put that into the computer. And only the Scarlet is installed into it right now. So that that's a thing. I just wanted to check with it. I just wanted to make sure that that was working. I said to you, it's been great. Been a few weeks since you caught a stream. Nice. Well, I mean, welcome back, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully things have been going well, and awesome to have you back here. Uh, so let's see. I also installed the Focusrite solo drivers because I realized that I was just running with whatever Windows installed, and that may or may not have been a correct thing. Uh, on Thursday and Friday... I ended up using this mic on my work, my work computer, and it worked out really well. Like it, it didn't disconnect all day. It didn't do anything else. So I think that that sort of gives the idea that it's not a problem with the mic. It's it's a problem with whatever the the USB or connections or the stuff were. Um, let's see. Then the last thing, not really connected to the mic, but uh, I went ahead and upgraded my um ethernet because i was using the ethernet cable since 20 uh, what when did i when did we get it I, it was possibly since before 2006 that we got it it was pretty old and i realized like hey there's like several different versions update for this so we got a new one installed it got it all set up and uh so hopefully stream should be better all around today and if things are going well I, I probably can actually update our kilobits per second again because i think i had that set up yeah i i had um at one point in time i set this up to four four k that is the wrong keyboard that keyboard so let me do four four k and we'll we'll play around with that Okay, so that being said, we'll, uh, uh, today, is a, um, today is Monday, which uh, Mondays are our project days. We're, since we're done with uh, deploying the course and we've got that going out, then I think it's time to uh, start with a new fun project. And uh, sort of like I mentioned last week on Monday, I have, a, um, I have an idea for some fun stuff that we can do with uh, Twitch uh, channel points. But we need to be able to listen to events in order for to make that work. And so that's what we're going to play around with today. We're going to explore. So I guess if we're exploring, it's hat time. Stacking, hey! How's it going? What's up? You're here for this stream. Well, awesome to have you here. We're going to be playing with the uh, uh, Twitch API. And I believe somewhere on Discord we had talked about the create we wanted to use, which, of course, I've now forgotten what it is. So I need to scroll back up. Okay, okay, yeah. You actually, you're the one who had mentioned it. It's is it literally just called Twitch API? Perfect. Okay. Well. 
not what I want. Switch API. So I think this is the one that you were talking about, right, Stacking? Yeah, Twitch underscore API by, uh, okay, so from the Twitch dash RS repo. Yeah, that one. Okay, that's the one Forsen's mod is working on. Nice. Okay, well, I am happy to use this, or at least to play around with it, see if we can get things going. And so that's, uh, that's the plan today. So I guess like as a preview of what we can do with this, we, uh, we discovered some fun things we can do. Now, we already know that Alacrity, if we make changes to the config file, then it'll auto-update like just right then. Like there's no, there's no refresh, there's no anything else, it just auto-updates. So we could change the font that we're using. We can change, I think, like dark mode to light mode. We can change like a bunch of different settings in there, which is pretty cool. For Helix, it's a little bit different. If I make a change to the config, so let's say uh, we go to, instead of Idwata, we go to Idwata. Instead of Idwata Dark, we go to Idwata. So I hit save. Well, that didn't obviously do anything, right? But if I come over here and I do a uh, P kill, I can't remember if there is a dash to this or not. Uh, might be there might be something I need to do with that. Uh, but I want to p kill helix. No, oh, okay, no, that's not it. That actually just killed it. I need to go find the actual command. It's p kill with the. Oh, okay. All right, let's put it back to Idwata Dark now. I'm gonna do p kill usr1 helix. It doesn't like kill kill it. It uh it basically just reboots it, restarts it, and then takes the new config. So now we can change anything we want dynamically. which is obviously going to be really nice. All right, so that's the goal. We want to be able to do changes. Uh, if I can get it to actually just do the theme update, that would be the best, right? That would be pretty awesome. Then we can start doing other things too where we can like add in uh, maybe different like different things to, um, to Helix. We can do different things to Zellage. We can do different things to... Uh, alacrity it'd be, it'd be fun we we can do all sorts of fun stuff so that being said let's uh go create um what is it twitch rs playground Oh, and I think we have a new version of Rust. So let's also install that. Even though this version of Rust, I don't believe is necessary for us because I don't plan on running this on Windows. And I don't know if this, even if I did, I don't know if it would be trying to execute any commands or batch files. So I think I'm safe regardless. Okay, so we got you up to date. Let's do a cargo new Twitch RS playground.
Okay, so basic stuff, right? We just make sure we get our hello world. That took a shocking amount of time. That's that's uh that's a thing. Okay, uh and back to, okay, up to you. Alright, so it looks like we need Tokyo. So I guess we'll install that. Does it say what we specifically need from here? My monitor just switched on and off. That's not good. Oh, interesting. So it's go this crate aims to target Helix itself. Oh, that's cool. Dayloop, hello. How are you doing today? You catch the hat? Nice. I um it's my it's my exploration hat. I've seen some other streamers in the past that use like, you know, fun fun props to sort of like Add some, add some color, fun, whatever to uh, their um, their stream, like whatever the theme is. But I only have one hat right now. I keep on thinking I want like a business hat, like some kind of like mogul hat or something. And then I can use that whenever I chat about like management or leadership and like how how businesses work. All right, so. We need that stuff. That's gonna be great. Okay, so Tokyo main. So Tokyo, we need to grab you. The Zerker, the hat floor. Yeah, <laughs> something like that, right? Uh, let's see. I think it's feature, and I want macros. Is there anything else that I want for this? Do I need RT multi-thread? I don't know. I guess we'll find out if I don't have it. And then I don't know if the, the Helix is actually catching these. Let's Let's find out. So if I try to do, no, so I need to restart. Okay. Okay, macro requires RT or RT multi-thread. That's why I remember needing it. Okay, so we get RT. Should I also get RT multi-thread? Oh, okay. I should get RT multi-thread. Okay, so you're happy. Back to you. You remember a VS Code extension allowed Twitch chat to highlight a line that was wrong. I remember if this would be possible in Helix. I think eventually we'd be able to get that. I would imagine we need we need mod support for Helix first, so I can like we can write the mod that would highlight the line, and then we need to be able to hit the API to activate that mod and like pass it the information. But yeah, if I remember correctly, that mod was. Created by uh, C Sharp Fritz and maintained by him too.
But yeah, that was a good mod. I like that a lot. Okay, uh, let's see. We do that. All right, so you're having me return a result from main. I'm going to handle this. Create the Helix client, which is used to make requests to the Twitch API. Okay. You know, I read, I read this, Helix, and my brain immediately went to Helix, the editor that we're using. And then I forgot that Helix is also the name of the API that Twitch uses. So it's that, yeah, it has nothing to do with the editor. You zoned out for a minute. Did I say something about Helix in the Twitch API? What I want to do is create an API or create a client or, or something that listens to the Twitch API that allows me to receive events that then we can affect Helix the editor with, which is going to be really confusing because we also are going to have Helix the API from Twitch, which is fun. They call it mods in Helix land. Why not a rhizome or some other DNA re related? Oh, that would be interesting. Uh, I don't, so because they haven't created it yet, there's no, there's no official word for it yet. I'm just thinking of like mods from literally everything else, but it could be anything else. It could be anything really. Helix plus Helix, a double Helix. Yeah, that that's exactly what it is. And then RJ, you've been watching too much Primogen. You want... I wanted to make a D's nuts joke. Well, you can always make those jokes and I will probably fall for them way more often than most of the streamers. Because I, I tend to not see those things at a time. But that's fun, right? Double helix. Wow. Uh, all the way. Yeah, we should we should do that. Well, I guess we are doing that. So, all right. So I want to create a new Helix client, which is going to take in a, okay. So I need, I need request also. Right. That's how you spell it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to create a Helix client default, which is going to be a type Helix client, which uses request client. So I need, first of all, I'm a little bit, do I have to pass in that type? But Oh, I need to install this thing, don't I? Uh, it's Twitch RS. Oh, my background is changing. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. The um, I didn't try to change any of the lighting, but I must have done something. So yeah, good point. It it felt like it was working before. And then, you know what? I turned on my lights right before the stream. I think that sometimes they take a little bit of time to warm up, as it were. So that's probably what it was. Although chroma key is not showing any of that. Wait. What? Okay. I opened up the filter. And it disappeared. I'm okay. OBS. You're 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 amazing, OBS. Don't never change. And by never change, I mean 
there, there's still quite a bit I want you to change. Yeah, the static was coming for me, wasn't it? Uh, Aluminum, hello. How are you doing today? And uh, Batman, hello. How are you? Thank you for that. Is the static of generative AI haunting the room? Oh, can you imagine once we have AI roaming around the world, we're going to have a whole bunch of AIs that people are going to think are ghosts. And they're just like random little IoT devices or something else that have the ability to move around and do stuff to the house or whatever. But like everybody's forgotten how to control them. Everybody doesn't remember they exist anymore. And now we just think they're, they're ghosts. That will be amazing. Okay, so I want Helix client. Can you bring that in? No? Where does Helix? Twitch API. Helix, Helix, okay, so, oh. Wait a second, I need something called Twitch API? Okay, so I need Twitch API as well. I bet I need the Helix feature. Okay, so now will this work? Kind of. Okay, uh, do I need request? But I need request too. Oh, it's back again. Okay. That's what you were talking about. I wait a second. Oh. It's the hat. It's the hat. The hat in very specific positions, the hat. Breaks it. Yeah, look at that. But if I tilt down, it comes back again. Oh, that's fun. Hold on. Let me see if I can fix it when, like, the hat is here. Come on. really hard for me to fix it when like I don't know what's going wrong <laughs> like I can't, it's not active okay I'm just gonna leave the filter up oh sorry about that I'm, I'm not used to the arm here so I need to um be more cognizant of it okay well I'll just leave the filter up so when it happens again we'll I'll play around with it you'll blame the cat not the hat but why would I do that no Cats should never be blamed for anything. They would they would never accept it. The only way to beat the ghost is to become the ghost and become transparent, which I can do. There we go. Now I can do Helix client. I want default. That. Ah, so then that's why I need this type, because type annotations needed. So you're going to be a Helix client. Which takes in request client. Okay. So I want a client from request. The trait bound request client not satisfied. 
The following other types implement trait. Okay, so no actions. Okay, hold on. Which ones do I need? So, Twitch API Helix Helix client. Twitch API. Oh, it's the wrong Helix client. Helix. Helix client. Twitch API. Twitch OAuth. Okay, but I don't think that's. Interesting. Now it makes me want to just copy this entire thing in. Or actually, no, let's just copy this in. Oh, yeah, that was the problem, which is strange. Okay. Cannot find type client. So, yeah, this is... Request client. Oh, nope, back to this again. HTTP client. Okay, so this is off of Twitch API. I have Helix. Um, oh, I wonder, oh, it could be. It could be an incompatible version of request. Let's go take a look at that. Also, an ad break just started. They're lasting a little bit more, like around a minute and a half right now. Let me, let me see if I can go to, Wait, 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 wait. Was it Twitch API you were having me go to or Twitch RS? It was Twitch RS created it, Twitch underscore API. Did I install a bad thing? I did install a bad thing. Twitch RS. Don't want you. Uh, let's see. To reset everything, I mean, I think I could just do a cargo build, right? And that removes it. Okay. Can you tell me what version of request we need? Dependencies. Yeah, you're right. Request 0 0.11. Okay, is there a way through here to set the version? So can I do like cargo add... Reference to a package to add as a dependency. Oh, and then I could do at version. Okay, so we could do cargo add Twitch. No, it was request at 0 0.11. Which updates you to 0 0.11. Let's see if that makes it a little bit happier.
Okay, yeah, I think it does. All right, so that was it. So now we have a Helix client. And then next we want a user token, which is going to have to come from a .env file. Okay, so I need to... Do you remember the fun when we all thought it was version pinging when it wasn't? There's a lot of fun times. And I'm sure we're going to have even more fun times in the future. Okay, so before I forget, now I can't update you uh, just to be safe. I'm going to do all my .env stuff over on the other window. What is this called? The Twitch RS Playground. Okay, so what do we want to put? Okay, this is going to be the user token, uh, the access token. So the Twitch. Access token equals, I'll just say hello for right now. We're going to want to install .env. And a .env macro? Yeah. I actually don't think I need the .env macro, do I? I'm um I'm impressed the microphone has continued to work. So I think one of the three things that I did, I guess one of the two things that I really did has uh hopefully resolved it. We'll see if it lasts the entire stream. Okay, so dot env I think it's you. Now, I probably want to just do, yeah, just like, hey, no matter what, you're okay. That'll be fine. And then I want to get the request token. So we're going to do Oh, so we can I uh, get this from, let's see, env, the centered env uh, var. Oh, wait, can I just do this with the env macro? Yeah, so I don't need the other macro, just this one. Twitch, what's this token? Oh, not to find a compile time. Okay, so the easiest way for me to work with this is to use Docker, and we'll create like a... I can use a Docker file to read from the .env to put that as an environment variable in there. I think that's going to be better, and then I don't even need .env anymore. That just won't be a thing we need. So, so we need a touch Docker file, and I need also a compose that YAML. Okay, for the Docker file.
I want um Oh, it'd be nice if I had like a language server for Docker files. But I don't think that exists, right? Oh, it's not help, it's health. Oh, there is a Docker Lang server. A schizophrenic web developer. Hello, how are you doing today? You need to learn SAS. Do I have a course already for SAS? I do not. I'm sorry about that. I let's see. You know, I never I never really officially took any courses or do any like learning for SAS. I sort of I guess like I'd learned normal CSS and I did take a course that also taught CSS along with some like front end web development stuff. And then from there on, like I felt that just reading through the documentation for SAS and then working with develop designers who knew SAS and sort of like, oh yeah, look, look, you could do this, you could do that, you could do this. And that that's all I've ever really needed. Python is so much easier. ENV works fine without needing Docker. I mean, I don't need Docker. I, I could use the .env with it, but I realized that I might as well just use Docker for this because the, there's a couple different in, cool things I can do with that. Plus we can do the, um, the new watch system. Wait, is the mic bad again? Did the mic go weird? It... Okay, the profile looks the same on the audio mixer. Hold on, let me, I'm going to turn on audio so I can listen to it. Oh, lots of weird mic pops. Hold on, let me, let me, okay. What does this sound like? How does it sound? Okay, I couldn't hear the bite pops, but I'm assuming that you're right. Okay, I'm going to try turning it off. Okay, no, that still didn't hear it. Mute you again. All right, uh, let me know if it's still there. I turned it off and back on again on the focus right itself, and we'll see if that works. Otherwise... I wonder if it could be the, okay, still there? Uh, okay, so on the focus right, input systems, it well, sounds like interference. Let me double check the cables in the back to make sure it's not like next to something that's like, potentially causing it issue. I didn't. Wait a second. No. The Yeti mic is. Okay, the Yeti mic wasn't muted. That could have been a problem. Is it is it still happening? Is it still bad? I'm Guessing it has, although I just muted the yet the other mic that I have on here as my backup emergency mic, which I thought I had muted before, but apparently I hadn't. Still broken. Okay, good to know. I will go. Let's do some uh, rewiring. I'll be right back.
That would have been a good idea. I did not mute it first. Okay, still broken? I might have to power cycle it too. In case it's like there's a, it caused issues with the buffer. Yeah, okay. Let me try. I'm try unplugging and replugging all the things. And this time I am going to try off. Okay, I moved it farther away so the cables doesn't go in front of the the speaker that I have and the cable doesn't touch the uh, power cable that I had plugged into the computer. So let's see if that works any better. The negative is the box is now really far away because the cable that came with it, which is the one I'm using, is really short. So that's not great. Okay, sounds good. Let me know if it goes bad again. I might need to buy a new cable for that. It's a USB C to A, which I need to keep. And I don't think I have very many of those around. Although I do have a converter. I have a USB C to A converter. That could work. But okay, let's uh, continue on. Um, language server. I would love to install a language server for this. Oh, there's two. Okay, so we have Docker Lang server and Docker Compose Lang server, along with YAML. Interesting, so both of them? Where do I find you? Is this a brew thing? All right, I'm going to run brew on my other profile and see if I can find Docker Lang server on it. I can find Docker LS. Tools for browsing and manipulating docker registries but that doesn't sound like docker lang server okay okay so i can install you powered by noj okay Oh, so VS Code Docker is using it. All right. Well, I guess I could install that.
Okay, so let's do... Okay, so let's what's what's the latest um what's the latest long term support? I think uh, I think I could do MVM LS remote, I think. Or actually I think I can just do NVM install LTS and it'll tell me Okay, so it's 20, V20. We can't compete building websites with people that use Elementor, WordPress, GUI, Page Builder. So now we have only advantage building web apps. I mean, I would say that that was true since before even that, right? Like there's been there's been tons of those tools out there that are really for like building web pages. And I wouldn't recommend anybody hire a developer to build just like a pamphlet page that doesn't really do much. And so, yeah, I would, I would argue that for like the last five or so years, maybe, maybe even as close to like seven or eight, we have it like, it's been, we, we, we couldn't compete with people building simple web pages or sites with um with any of those tools like think i guess like what are the other ones right so we have we have elementor with wordpress we have square we have wix we have like pretty much every e-commerce site comes with their own shopify i think has their own who remembers dreamweaver we had those too Heck, even even some people were just creating documents in PowerPoint or something and then exporting as a website. And people people love like it works with those. It work it works for those people. But just like everything else, we need to stay ahead of the times, right? Like we're we're not gonna make even if you take those contracts, you're not gonna make enough money to like survive on them. If you have to use WordPress, then I would always recommend the built-in Gutenberg editor over Elementor, even if both are terrible. That probably makes sense. Like with WordPress, staying as default as possible seems to be the best choice. Less possibilities of being hacked, too. Okay. I want... Uh, we have you set up. I want to do a npm install. It's going to be global. And we want Docker file language server, no JS. Cool. After the installation is completed, you can start the language server with the Docker lang server binary. To specify the desired method of communicating with the lang server via one of the three arguments shown before. Wait, really? Wait, wait, no, this will this will be launched via Helix on its own, won't it? So if I do Helix health Docker file now. Okay, so it found Docker Lang server. Docker file. Oh, I was really hoping it would get 
it would get help with that. Seems like those things make pretty web pages that can't do anything meaningful outside of few use cases, which is perfectly fine, right? Like for those use cases, then that's good. Because if, if somebody were to come to me and said, hey, I want to pay you to build like just some very simple web pages, then I would probably point them in the direction of WordPress. Or Wix or anything else like that. And my, what we've seen in the past is the the simple the, the simpler technologies like building simple web pages, that has always been like whatever is in the past gets automated and and created away. And those tools are automation tools, right? Like it automates the actual creation of the code part of it, so you can use a GUI uh, to to fix it. And what we've seen is that some people, some non technical people, are able to use those tools and create applications that are great and some still high end up hiring like a WordPress dev to do it for them. As it's you're stuck with a WordPress site that you're literally updating right now. Yeah. Uh, are you, are you being paid for it at the very least? Uh, yes, yes, man. Hello. How are you doing today? What crates am I using? I am using, let's see, dot, uh, I am trying to get away from that. So just a request 0 0.11. So very specific version set with that. Uh, Tokyo and Twitch API. But we haven't really gotten that far with it yet. I was hoping to get the language server for Docker set up here in, uh, here in, um, uh, the terminal for Helix. Okay, so that's Docker language server. Yeah, that is for Docker. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't notice this. All that gives me is highlighting. <laughs> okay, I probably didn't need to install that. I, I, this is the one that gives me auto in. Okay, it gives me auto indent. It won't give me anything else. So there's there's nothing that will help me with like auto completion. That's too bad. You're not being paid enough, is it too? Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. I suppose that's where if you have like somebody who can help out a lot with this, that would work. All right, let's just go with Rust latest. That'll be fine. Uh, I want. Is there anything that I want to do with this? Oh, right. We want to copy. I want to copy the code in. So let's copy. Can I just copy like star to slash code? Does that work? I'm going to work dir slash code. Uh, and I want to command. Cargo run. We got a WordPress developer to help out. They only seem to know Elementors. So that is why we have three different competing systems and a monthly security vulnerability. Oh. Yeah, that that is that is something I've I've seen an unfortunate amount of is some people will learn like one technology discover that that's pay like it pays the bills like you can get jobs with that one technology and then you stay with that one technology it's really dangerous though because if you stay with that one technology and you don't necessarily like keep up to date you don't learn new things you don't have a mentality where you could learn new things then you run into this system like you're running into a situ where it's, oh, hey, I can only use this thing. So if you want to pay me, I have to use that technology, which is dangerous. Like every time that it's a, I have to use this thing, you're it, it's like, um, uh, just imagine the, the Ralph, uh, uh, 
Simpsons quote, like, I'm in danger because that's a replacement danger. Like somebody can come and just replace you because they know something else. And the longer we stay in that mentality, the harder it is to get out of. So sitting in like, sitting in discomfort and being willing to be dis uncomfortable with because it's like, I needed to learn something new right now in order to get paid. That's, that's, a, that's a good mentality to have. It's better to have how can I use this thing mentality. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All right, ads are about to start. So I guess a heads up for that. Um, okay, so I want to run this. We're going to do a Docker build. Uh, what do I want to call this? This is going to be... We'll just call it Twitch RS. Oh, that. Oh, I need to give it an ENV, don't I? ENV. Oh, so I can't copy everything. How do I copy everything? Is that even possible? Oh, can I just copy dot? So dot, uh, and V, I want, you are gonna be just hello. Okay, and then we try you again. And then I want to docker run. All right, so let's, um, I'll just remove this af as soon as it's done. Uh, I don't really care about running it long-term right now. We're gonna use a docker compose to throw it in there. And, Oh, but you're still going to yell at me about it not being here. Oh, that's fun. I have to set this up to pretend that you exist. Okay, hold on, I need to... Okay, that will... At least pretend that it knows it. We have you, you're good to go. Oh, I also want to, we're gonna create the client and let's also just like print out the token so I can just see that that works, right? So, switch access token, so. Oh, I probably don't want to send it in with the target stuff. So I probably want a Docker ignore file. I don't know if it matters that much because it's going to rebuild it anyways because Linux in there and Unix out here. Okay, and then we get hello, which is the one I put into the Docker file as opposed to the hi, the one I have here. Um, oh no, yes, yes, man. The message was retracted. I don't know what you said. Sorry about that. And I didn't do that. So maybe that was auto mod. Does YouTube even have auto mod? <laughs> 